it's normal to have to train through stress and focus on your health through stress and all of these uh, life obstacles that are thrown your way. This is normal. Buckle up and get ready to smash your health and fitness goals. This is Fortitude RX Radio, bringing you engaging conversations that inspire you to take action and take control. Physical and mental resilience, strength, nutrition, rehab, mindset, and more. We've got the prescription. This is Fortitude RX Radio. Here are your hosts, Tyler Campbell and Les Kais. So as of recording this, Les and I are both moving or in the process of moving to new homes. Uh, Les has an in-between thing before he moves to Hawaii, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm all settled in the house now, but still having to hit all these ridiculous, stress-filled days of trying to get the house situated and things like that. Uh, it's definitely an exciting period, obviously, to move anywhere new, especially if you're moving up, uh, even laterally somewhere. Uh, it's always a good thing to sort of get a new environment and fix sort of your mindset when it comes to being stuck someplace. So I know that in our previous house, I was sort of always viewing it negatively, um, despite trying to be positive with everything I'm doing. Uh, but just getting into a new house is refreshing and all that. Uh, with regards to stressing out about things, though, I mean, I think anyone that's a homeowner understands that immediately upon stopping renting, you are now totally in charge of everything. And that means anything that goes wrong is all on you. When I got here, there was some appliance issues and traveling back and forth from Home Depot and Walmart and Lowe's and all this stuff. And details don't necessarily matter for that, but it was a frustrating day the other day. And having to get into the, the mindset or mind space of, you know, not letting it get to you is a pretty hard thing to do in the moment. Uh, but in retrospect, you look back and it's like, well, that wasn't that bad. You just needed to calm down and get the job done and the day would pass regardless. Uh, so I think that figuring out the stress and how it affects your training is a big part of it because I know that the move affected my training a good bit over the past week. And I wanted to figure out stress and how we adjust to it for training in your life and vice versa. It's definitely been like a big mountain to climb with like with both of us really because we're kind of like in the same but opposite situation. Whereas like you're in the process of moving in, I'm in the process of moving out. Uh, so I've got to have everything ready um, within the next two weeks so that all of our stuff can get picked up and then it gets shipped off to Hawaii. So I won't have 90% of the things that I own for like a good six to eight week period. Um, so just like trying to structure my day around packing up the house, getting my work done, trying to get all my workouts done. Um, it's a lot and it's a lot of stress to handle on a day to day basis. So you kind of have to like reevaluate where you're putting that stress into what bucket. Uh, clearly I can't just like write off oh, I'm just like not going to work on the house stuff. Like I've got to deal with that. I've got to deal with work. Uh, so training is going to take some sort of hit. Um, this is just a good opportunity where me and Tyler are both in like a similar situation where we can't necessarily just like push as hard in the gym as we possibly want to. Uh, we're not going to be like striving for huge PRs or anything like that. We just have to kind of cut back our training mentality more towards a maintenance phase. Uh, with that maintenance phase, it, it's very common. I found with a lot of my athletes, they look at these times and they're like, oh, I'm moving. I got all this work stuff going on and everything's crazy and I'm super stressed out. And they're expecting their workouts to either be an outlet or go just as well as normal. When in fact, you kind of need to shift that viewpoint to, I just need to get some work done so that I can maintain. Uh, and that doesn't mean you're going to go backwards. A lot of my athletes will view these times as like, oh, I'm, I'm losing gains. I'm not making progress. If you can kind of just restructure it and just look at it as like pushing pause on this, it's going to help you a bunch. For me, like I'm not going to get every single workout done for the week, uh, but I'm going to cherry pick and choose which ones I find most important, which ones aren't going to carry over uh, more stress into like the moving stuff that I have to do. Uh, Tyler mentioned something about when we were talking earlier about how he had to carry a bunch of heavy stuff one day for the move. So he just called his deadlifts off that day because he still had that same physical stress. And sometimes uh, these these periods just take a moment to reflect and step back and just realize, like, what are my priorities here? What's most important? Yeah, in regards to 
sort of calling off the, the deadlift day, I almost knew that well before I was going to move. I, I told Les that as my coach, you know, I'm probably going to miss this day. Uh, you know, if I don't have to, then I won't. But you only have so much of a stress bucket to fill before it overflows and you get injured or something along those lines, especially with physical stress. When you're doing something like a move, for instance, and you're doing most of the heavy lifting or half of it or whatever it is and getting in these weird positions that you're not used to it's not that those positions are dangerous necessarily what it is is that you're not able to adapt to these positions because you're not trained in them so one day of moving is not training stress it's just acute stress and so with that you can't just then suddenly throw on more acute training stress and not expect to either injure yourself or just overdo it and eventually have some issues with training so you may as well just prepare to back off on that training, miss that day, whatever it is, and adjust from there rather than digging yourself into a hole. So I think that's the, the biggest thing for me is, is making sure that you know how to adjust for physical, mental stress, whatever it is, uh, so that you can keep on a plateau at the very least, as opposed to digging down and not having a rebound effect because it would be an injury and not an actual like purposeful super compensation effect. Yeah. And so there is the whole, like you can easily push too hard and do too much in these times. Um, but I think it's also important to touch on that. Like this also isn't a time to just stop and just not do anything just because like things are hard. Things are uncomfortable. You have a lot going on. It doesn't mean you just like stop training altogether and just put no effort into your diet, put no effort into your training and just write it off and say, oh, I'll just pick back up on this later. Cause that's when you'll beat yourself up, uh, later on. When you do get back into training, you're going to be like, man, I really wish I at least did a little bit during this time. Uh, so there's there's the, there's a middle ground there that you need to find both mentally and physically where you're doing enough to hold on to what you've worked for, but you're not doing so much that you're just digging a deeper hole. So not doing enough is going to dig a hole and doing too much is also going to dig a hole. That's why it's important to just manage your expectations and know I just need to get done what I can get done. I'm not going to try to add to any of those stress buckets. I'm not going to try to add to my like physical exhaustion too much, but you also just don't want to take it super easy because that's really not going to get you anywhere either. And we're talking about this sort of in the, the moving houses scenarios, but there's also the idea of something like having a, a newborn baby and not getting sleep. And that's a stressor, a huge one, obviously, along with having something now, you know, relying on you to survive is a huge thing. Uh, so a lot of people, when they have a kid, they're like, oh, I'm just not going to work out anymore when what you need to do is just find the time to do it like once or twice a week so that you're sort of keeping up with yourself and maintaining your stress levels. One is a little outlet, but also as just because working out is, is healthy and will help you sleep better um, regardless. So obviously the baby would wake you up in that scenario, but at the same time, you have to have these things that are keeping you physically active and healthy otherwise, because if you just stop the things that are healthy for you, one mentally and two physically, you're not going to have any progress whatsoever and you're likely not going to maintain at all either. So um, there's a lot to be said for types of stress and what might stress you out. Uh, I think that there's, you just have to base your training on what's happening in your life. And because you, there's no realistic way to make your life about training unless you're a professional athlete, which most people listening to this will not be. So Making sure that you understand that is a, a big part of dealing with stress and not worrying so much about how training is going to go because of that stress. You just have to do something about it. I find that most people view their training as something that should feel good and like that they're ready to crush. Uh, and then they get super disappointed, especially in these stressful times in their life where they're thinking like, oh, I'm stressed out. I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to crush it and I'm going to feel so much better. Then they end up feeling worse because training was hard because they're stressed. If you can actually just shift your view to training is going to be challenging. It is a challenge. It is another stressor, but it's going to make me better. It'll end up feeling better because you're not going into it with this expectation of like, this is going to go great. You need to view it as like, this is going to be challenging, but I can do that. Like I can handle a challenge. I'll be fine. It'll probably end up going a lot more in your favor if you view it as a challenge and something to uh, overcome. And not like a huge daunting thing either versus like expecting it to go good. Uh, once you expect it to go good in these stressful times, you're probably going to have a really off day. Ooh, actually, I wanted to touch on the baby thing too, uh, because this is actually like kind of a pet peeve of mine when I do have somebody that's like, hey, I'm having a kid. I'm going to stop working out or I'm going to stop competing. This is uh, when it's for people that the lifting or the competing or whatever it is grounds them, right? So there's some people that just totally do it on the side. They don't really put much effort in. Not necessarily talking about those people, 
But for those of you that like working out is your routine, like it is part of your life. And then say you have a kid or you get a new job or any of these things, you just stop because you're like, well, I have this now. I need to focus on this. Uh, The big problem with that, in my opinion, is that when you have that child, um, it's better for them to see you pushing towards something and overcoming things and making yourself better than just giving up and sacrificing. Uh, So keep that in mind with this too. Uh, You can impact others. You can impact your kids in a positive way by them seeing you do things that make you better. So if you just have these moments of stress and you just give in to sacrifice for other people or other things going on and you don't necessarily take care of yourself, one, that's not going to help you, but it's also not going to help other people because all they're going to see is, oh, dad or whoever gave up his dreams because of me. I think this is a good point of ownership too, when it comes to owning what you're going to do with your life and what you're going to do with your body and things like that. What I've heard recently, sort of resenting the person that quote unquote made you stop training. So if we're talking about a kid, for instance, or whatever it may be, um, you know, 10 years down the line, when you've gained a bunch of weight and you're, you know, no longer have any muscle or fitness or anything like that, you're going to look at the kid, obviously not all the time, unless you're a narcissist and awful person, but you'll have some idea in your head of resentment for this kid came along and now I look and feel bad. And so you don't want to do that anyway. Uh, I think most people would probably listen to this and say, I would never do that, but it happens a lot. Um, So when you're deciding what you're going to do for yourself and what you're going to do for this child, you need to think of it as like adding on to your life. You know, this, this kid should be adding things to you uh, as a person, but you should be focusing on helping them. But at the same time, you have to keep focusing on yourself. Like it's just part of your life. It's, it's still your life, no matter what your kid's going to live his or her own life. And therefore you have to keep living yours. And that means staying healthy and staying fit for them. Like Les just said, but also for yourself. So, um, I'm not a dad. I can't, you know, live that life necessarily yet, but I still understand hearing from other people, you know, what they, they feel and experience later on down the line if they don't keep up with themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And same, same for my case, you know, I'm not a dad yet, but I will be one day. Um, and I want to show them like what it's like to work hard and what it's like to make myself better and be healthy and so on and so forth. The, only, the main reason I feel like I can't even talk on this is just because I've worked with so many people and had these conversations with them, uh, both from the stance of the people that do give up um, and how their kids end up viewing them and how things go with them versus those that they figure it out and they make a way to restructure their day and actually still continue training and still continue focusing on their health. Their kids pretty much just follow in their footsteps versus, you know, the other kids, they will just see their parents gave up and just kind of follow along suit with that. Uh, so you are an example for those around you. So how you handle these moments of stress along with your training and all this, other people are going to take notice of that, whether it's your kids whether it's your coworkers, your friends, whatever. When other people see that you're able to still maintain or make progress during these stressful times, other people will start to realize like, oh, maybe I can do that too. So you can impact other people in a positive way when you manage these stress buckets the right way and you still continue to make yourself better or at least put yourself in a maintenance phase uh, through these stressful times. And these maintenance phases aren't necessarily just maintaining everything. You can actually find places to progress in like conditioning work or something like that. Instead of doing a long strength workout, your strength may plateau for a bit while you work on something that's actually been needed for a long time in these sort of phases where you've been skipping out on cardio work or conditioning work, whatever it may be, or doing more muscle growth things, whatever you need, whatever is important to you at the time, you know, it, it may be something that you're you're just not realizing you're missing, um, but you have this new time that is because you've taken away the two hours of working out and now have 30 minutes. You have a shorter amount of time. That means you're going to have to work on something that forces conditioning on you and stuff like that. So it's not that, you know, everything's going to go away or that everything's going to maintain. You may have progress or regression uh, depending on what you're doing, but overall it should help you in some way. And you need to look for that, that challenge, like Les said, and go after that specific thing that's going to be hard for you because hard things make you live longer because you're better at getting over adversity. Yeah, and uh, that's actually a good point too because I didn't even really think about that, but I have actually had to substitute some of my days um, where I know like I'm not going to be hitting huge PRs and stuff. I might not have that two-hour window to work out. I might have 30 minutes. Uh, So on some of those days, I'll simply just hit like a really quick bodybuilding session and then I'll go like jog a mile. Uh, And that 
all in all is going to take me 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, so I am working on my conditioning during this time. So it does help to view these times where maybe you got injured, maybe you just have too much going on, whatever the stressors may be. If you can actually view that as an opportunity to work on the things that you've been slacking on, uh, that's also going to give you just like a positive vibration that's going to lead you towards like more progress anyway. So instead of viewing it as like, oh man, I can't like absolutely crush this strength work, uh, but I can maybe like do some cardio and just work on some other things that I typically neglect. You start working on those things that you normally neglect. It's going to give you like a positive feeling during these moments of stress uh, and give you some sense of fulfillment which will then just help carry you back into progress when you can get back to your normal routine. And so most of life stressors to me are something that are predictable for the most part. You know when you're going to move, you know when you're going to have a kid. Uh, maybe not the, you know, the realization that you're going to have a kid all the time, <laughs> but you know for nine months this is going to occur. You know, stuff like that uh, in the normal circumstances, I guess I'll say. Um, but other than those things, you know, you know that when work is going to get busy generally, it might be ups and downs that you don't expect and things along those lines. But at the same time, you usually know when things are going to get stressful. So with regards to that, I think you basically should know with training that you can't constantly linearly progress up forever. Otherwise, everyone would squat 3000 pounds, but no one does, of course. So you have these times of stress, you may as well take your purposeful maintenance periods where you back off after a big peak, or whatever it may be, depending on who you are, if you're an athlete, or if you're just looking for general fitness, there's peaks and valleys purposefully in training in order to one, not get injured and to progress well by backing off purposefully. So you might as well make it so that it aligns with your life stressors that you see coming. So if you can make it happen that way, that's great. Generally, that might take a coach to understand what needs to happen and when it needs to happen. And that's where we would come in for sure. But other than that, I mean, I think that that's just, that's true of diet. That's true of all of life stressors in general is knowing how to adjust for all of these things in all of the, the same bucket and all of the, the little buckets that are involved in that as well. Yeah, I have uh, I have one lifter in particularly. He's an elite lifter, um, but he's also a football coach and does a lot of other things with work. He basically just structures when he can compete during the year around when he has the most work going on. So we know I can't push him super hard. Uh, he can't necessarily like, exert enough uh, physical expenditure to compete in, say, the fall during their season. And then in the spring, when they have spring training, it's kind of the same boat. So he has these windows through the year where he can really push. And if you can start to kind of look ahead at these things and structure like ahead of time, like, all right, like I've got a good eight week period ahead of me where I don't have a lot going on. I feel pretty good. I can push here, but then I'm going to have like this crazy workload for three months after this period. So I need to cut it back into maintenance and shorten my workout, so on and so forth. Just look ahead at these things and also view this as this is actually normal. It's normal to have to train through stress and focus on your health through stress and all of these uh, life obstacles that are thrown your way. This is normal. The problem that I feel most people fall into is they look at it as, oh, like life is just kicking me in the nuts right now. And I have all these things going on. Why me? It's actually really just normal to have all of these things thrown in your face and all of these obstacles to overcome. So it's not like you have a special case scenario where like the universe is out to get you and only you. This is everybody. Everybody always has things to overcome uh, and everybody always has to like restructure and redefine what's important to them at certain points of their life and of their training. Uh, so if you can just view it as like, this is just another day, I just have to put one foot in front of the other. That's going to help you a lot versus just thinking that the universe is just out to get you for some reason. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I think that that's true of, of everyone thinking that they're they're the center of their own world, of course, like everyone is. Uh, it's just a matter of knowing that everyone else is going through similar things. It's sort of the realization when you become like an adult where it's like, oh, no one knows what they're really doing. They just are sort of figuring it out over time. And it's like, that's, that's fine. That's what life is, is figuring it out and finding adversity and overcoming it. So I think that that's a, a good place to sort of wrap this up in that we, we know how to deal with stress. We know that you should have these predictable sessions or predictable times in your life where you're going to find stress and therefore you need to back off on training and, and expect it and embrace it as a time where you can work on other things or 
uh, focus on the life things that are probably stressful because they're good for you. Um, you know, obviously undue work stress is never fun or anything like that, but it may, might be somewhere where you can get ahead in life and start making more money or whatever it may be. It doesn't really matter. There's usually something positive that can come out of these stressful situations. Um, and, but not always. And, you know, it, it doesn't always happen that way and that's fine, but you can always adjust your training and always make progress eventually from these periods of maintenance. And I think that's really the point here. Yeah. And uh, shameless plug here, but you know, find yourself a coach like us where we can help you with these things. We can help restructure your training, your diet, so on and so forth to where it does fit your life a little bit better. Uh, I think it is really important to have people around you that you can use as tools uh, for these situations. This way, you're not just like wondering like, oh, well, what do I do? What do I cut out? What, what can I adjust on my diet to make it easier during these times? Find somebody that's going to help you with that, and it's going to make all this a lot easier. And that's really why me and Tyler are coaching each other, because I'll be honest, if it were just up to me uh, during this time, I don't know how much work I would get done. But having somebody that holds me accountable and helps me restructure what to do and what he finds most important for me during these times, it, it's been a huge lifesaver. It really has. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Fortitude RX Radio. You're officially one step closer to conquering your goals and living your best life. For more info or to connect with your hosts, check out FortitudeRx.com. We'll see you next time.